number five question is, who are you? Is that an important question? Or would you say, who am I? Not who you are, who am I? And if I tell you who am I, who I am, what does it matter? It will be out of curiosity, won't it? It's like reading a menu at the, win at the window. You have to go into the restaurant and eat food. But merely standing outside and reading the menu won't satisfy your hunger. So, to tell you who I am, who I am is really quite meaningless. First of all, I'm nobody. Right? That's all. It's very simple as that. I'm nobody. But what is important is who you are. What am I? What are you? When they ask who you are, they are, in that question is implied, you are somebody very great, therefore I'm going to imitate you. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you brush your teeth or whatever it is. I'm going to imitate you. Which is part of our pattern, you understand? There is the hero, or the man who is enlightened, or the guru, say, I'm going to copy everything you do. Which becomes so absurdly silly, you understand? Childish, to imitate somebody. And are we not the result of a lot of imitation? The religions have said, they don't use the word imitate, but give yourself over, surrender yourself, follow me, I am this, I am that, worship, right? All this is what you are. In school you imitate. Please. Acquiring knowledge is a form of imitation. And, of course, there is the fashion, short dress, long dress, long hair, short hair, beard, no beard. Imitate, imitate, imitate. And also we imitate inwardly. So we all know that. But to find out who you are, who you are, not who the speaker is, is far more important. And to find out who you are, you have to inquire. You are the story of mankind, which is really a very if you really see that, it gives you tremendous vitality, energy, beauty, love. Because it is no longer a small entity struggling in the corner of the earth. You are part of this whole hum humanity, which has a tremendous responsibility vitality, beauty, love. But most of us won't see this, but whereas we are most of us concerned with ourselves, with our particular little problem, particular little sorrow and so on. And to and to step out of that narrow circle seems almost impossible. Because we are so 
conditioned, so programmed like the computers, that we cannot learn something new. The computer can, but we can't. See the tragedy of it. The machine that we have created, the computer, can learn much faster, much infinitely more than I can, than the brain can. And the brain, which has invented that, that has become ultra-intelligent machine, right? Whereas I, the, uh, the, our brain is sluggish, slow, dull, because we have conformed, we have obeyed, we have followed, there is the guru, there is the priest, there is the rich, you follow? And when you do revolt, as the revolutionaries and the terrorists do, it is still very superficial, changing the pattern of politics, of so-called society. Society is merely the relationship between people. And we are talking of a revolution, not physical, but the revol psychological revolution in which there is no at the depth conformity. We put on trousers in, because in this country and you put on in India's different clothes. That's not conformity. That's, that's nothing childish. But inwardly, not a feeling of conformity. Conformity exists when there is comparison. For a mind to be totally free from comparison, that is, to learn, to observe the whole history which is embedded in you, 